while back, I had a crazy idea to build my own 6-axis robot arm. I wanted one powerful enough to lift my camera and move it around with a 500mm range, but apparently even the cheapest arms that can hit the spec are around $4,000. And I'm cheap, so instead I decided to invest hundreds, no, thousands of hours designing and programming my own. I started off by making my own 3D printed harmonic drive to achieve the high torque in a compact and, most importantly, cheap package. Then I integrated this drive into the base of the arm, building and testing the first two joints, which works great, but a two joint robot just isn't that useful. So now it's time to finish this up, or most of it at least. In this video I'll be adding three more axes, bringing the total up to five. I'll also bring up my new controller motherboard, and write the first pass at code to handle the inverse kinematics, and finally I'll do some strength testing and just test the arm's general capabilities. But before all that, I first want to thank Onshape for once again sponsoring this video. Onshape is a powerful cloud-native CAD and PDM platform built for businesses. Onshape was actually created by the founders of SolidWorks. They saw that modern engineering teams still faced many challenges relating to their CAD and PDM systems. So what did they do? Well, they started from scratch to create Onshape. Since Onshape was designed and optimized for cloud use, this allows for some really powerful and unique features, like their PDM system with a Git-inspired version control, my personal favorite. This allows you to cherry-pick specific features to merge and makes collaboration and version control really easy. And Onshape is always growing. New releases are pushed to the product every three weeks to add features and new functionality. Recently, Onshape added PCB Studio to connect eCAD and MCAD designs. They also just acquired a company named Cloud Milling, which means Cam is coming to Onshape in early 2023. That is really huge. Plus, all of these updates happen automatically over the air and in the background, so your company will never have to deploy a CAD update ever again. I would highly recommend every engineer and product developer watching consider using Onshape for you and your business. You can try it for free at www.onshape.pro slash 3D Printed Life. So first things first, I need a plan. I've decided to lay out my joint similar to a universal robot style arm. This means I have my rotary base, then three hinges in a row with their rotation axes all perpendicular, followed by two more rotation axes each perpendicular to the last. This gives me my full six degrees of freedom I need, and will also help me stick to the form factor I want. I'm starting with my base from my last video, but gonna do some upgrades first. I'll be replacing the 3D printed pulley with a metal one, which should help reduce the belt slipping here, and I'll be upgrading the wave generator and the harmonic drive to eliminate the shaft slipping issues that I constantly had in the last video. This concept is actually something I saw first used by the Voron 3D printer. It uses G22 pulleys, which are standardized, cheap, and off the shelf for the clamping feature. You yank off the top of the pulley and then press it into your 3D printed part with matching grooves. And just like that, you have a 3D printed piece that securely can mount to shafts. Now on with the rest of the builds. Oh, huh, that's weird. My NEMA 23 is not fitting where it's supposed to. I definitely put this model in CAD. It turns out I was using a 40mm long NEMA 23, which I swear does exist, but only barely. I'm gonna just reprint this link. Now with the new parts, I can finally assemble the link. You'll notice these parts have a lot of holes in them, and this is for one of my secret weapons. Carbon fiber rods. Basically, these links are just too big to print on your average printer in one piece. So I cut them in half. <clears throat> Before printing. In order to securely connect the two halves and gain some extra rigidity for free, I'm using these super cheap, light, and rigid carbon fiber tubes. A simple addition which should just help improve things overall. So now you may see why I went with the joint configuration I did. It allows me to much more easily integrate all of the motion components within the frame itself. And not only that, but the wiring for all of them as well. Plus, I can also mount the motors as close to the base of rotation as possible for each joint to minimize moving weight. Joint 2 rotates here, but the motor actually lives here. Same story with joint 3, which also has an 8 to 1 belt reduction. Joint 4 is admittedly the laziest solution. I kind of just found a really tiny stepper and threw it in and didn't include any gearing. I don't really know how much power I'm going to need here, so this is a problem for future me. And with the arm now built, belts attached, motors wired up, the next step is driving them. For that, I designed my own motherboard. Yes, this is unnecessary. There are off-the-shelf six-axis boards. And to be honest, I really kind of just did this for the engineering experience. And so you don't have to. 
But this particular board is really exciting for one reason. It's the first to use my mub. The mub was born out of convenience and necessity, and it's going to be the heart of probably every new board I design. The idea is to basically clone the Feather M4, but add some more robust power regulation on board, access to every single pin on the micro, add super low profile board to board connectors, and finally, make it really tiny. And so I did, and then I built up four more. This will let me dodge component shortages, save development and debugging time, save some money, and best of all, I can easily swap out the mub if I damage it or the board it's on. Anyway, this motherboard is pretty basic. It has three slots for TMC5160 drive modules, two onboard TMC2041 chips, which drive two motors each, giving me a total of seven drives, plus some other I.O., and I only messed up two traces. So after some quick jumpers, it's ready to test. And we have motion. Five axes are operational. From here I took some old code I wrote for G-code parsing and path planning that came from my crust cutting robot, believe it or not, and this worked pretty well after I fixed the memory leak. For now, all these commands are at the joint level. Later on I'll get into the fancy IK so I can make the end effector follow nice linear profiles. Now I'm going to bolt it onto my desk and get into the more fun testing. The USB cable barely reached for my computer, so I'm going to have to be super careful to avoid any large joint zero motions. So, that large joint zero motion caused the mub to twist out of its socket, damaging the motherboard side of the connector in the process. A bit of reworking and we're back. So what went wrong? Well, turns out I had another software bug that was injecting random numbers and characters into every command I sent. Whoops. Now that the arm is working and the code is stable, it's time to fully test its capabilities. Remember, my goal here was to carry my camera, so one kilogram at end effector should be plenty. And I'm not gonna take things slow and ramp it up, I'm just gonna jump straight to that target weight. Well, slightly less. And the wrist isn't strong enough. Darn. I even thought this might be an issue and I'd already swapped out the Pancake NEMA 17 for a standard sized one, but still just not enough torque, even with that 8 to 1 reduction. Thankfully, the harmonic drives in joints 1 and 2 are just working marvelously. They're not the smoothest, probably because of their suboptimal tooth profile and, oh yeah, being entirely 3D printed plastic, but the power is definitely there. In fact, the power is really there. It had no trouble at all with 4 pounds. Now to find the limit. And surprisingly, even with the target load of 2 pounds at the end effector, it's still able to drive the hinges at over half a radian per second. Which isn't super fast, but considering what I have here, it's really not bad. The base rotary can move even quicker, which gets a little bit frightening. And after all that torture, I mean testing, the arm is still working perfectly. Now, except for the wrist, still. The motor must have gotten hot enough that it deformed and melted the PLA mounting bracket. Which is fine, I plan on redesigning this part anyway. For now, let's dive into that IK. Inverse kinematics, the art of converting world coordinates into robot joint angles. It sounds really easy, but with six constraints, six unknown variables, lots of singularities, and each variable affecting other ones in different ways, the math gets tricky really quick. I did find this super nice and helpful guide to robotics, which helps you define your robot and figure out how to write the IK for your specific robot design. But after spending an hour with this, I realized I just don't have the patience to figure it out. I was never really good at matrix math in school and figured I'd never need it, but mm, here we are. So instead, I did the simple and not very effective way. This is the code, and it's super short, but it did take a little bit of time to get here. The inputs to the IK are position, X, Y, Z, and rotations A and B. Rotation A maps directly to joint 4, which is an IK, IK. Then joint 0 is calculated with the arctangent of the X, Y position, and joints 1, 2, and 3 are calculated using trig, link lengths, and the input constraints. And that's it. It's simple, but it works, for now. Then I just need to drive all the joints of the robot arm to their zero position, and send the IK commands. It is very stuttery right now, since the IK is done on my computer, and then the joint angles are streamed over serial to the robot motherboard. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to link the commands together and make them smooth, kind of like a 3D printer does. I have a few ideas, but I haven't been able to get anything working just yet. Anyway, I think I need to give this a proper test. Now since the wrist still isn't strong enough for my heavy, and expensive, camera, I'll use my phone. I printed this very basic mounting plate. 
installed it, and gave it a go. I'm using joint level commands here to try to keep things a little bit smoother. Really not too bad. It's shakier than I'd like, but I think this can be improved by tweaking the harmonic drive design and maybe using PETG instead of PLA. Now, for comparison, here's what it looks like using the IK. Now this arm is still far from complete. I plan on starting a recad from scratch now that I'm happy with the design and know basically how I want things laid out and connected. But if you really insist on building your own, all of the code and files can be found on my GitHub page linked below. So what's next? Finishing, I mean, Fixing the wrist joints is definitely the top of my list, followed by adding IK for all six degrees of freedom and definitely smoothing out that control. I'd like to build a basic GUI to command the arm, record and playback routines, which would help with filming for sure. Adding closed loop feedback to each joint is a stretch goal and would be amazing. And finally, adding all the finishing touches, aka full aesthetic covers and getting rid of all those visible screws because Let's be honest, no matter how good or bad something works, 80% of people's judgment is based on how it looks. Don't hate the player, hate the game. And by the way, I did a super quick estimate of the bomb cost, and I should have no trouble at all hitting my sub $500 goal, which is honestly nuts considering how powerful and large this arm is. A huge thank you to all my Patreons for your continued support, and thank you to Onshape for sponsoring this video. So with that, I'm gonna go and take a nap. Live long and prosper.